Hey everyone, for those of you who are new to our channel, I'm David. And I'm Jenny. And we are full-time RVers, which means we live in our trailer and travel the country. We get to travel the country and see beautiful places we never even knew existed. However, we've been on the road now for a year and a half and we kind of came to the realization <laughs> that we've never really shown you guys the inside of our trailer very much or how we organize things or even how we organize the truck. So today we're gonna show you the whole rig, truck and trailer inside and out. So let's get to it. So let's start with the truck, our tow vehicle. It's nothing special, but it gets the job done. It's a 2004 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD with the Duramax diesel. First, I'll start by answering the question that we get a lot, and that is, if I'm gonna be towing a travel trailer or fifth wheel, should I go with the diesel or stick with gas? And hands down, get a diesel. I love my diesel truck. This is the first one I've ever owned, and it is incredible. So definitely get the diesel over the gasoline for towing. Now we're not gonna spend too much time on a truck because really it's nothing special. Uh, but all I can say is we bought it with 66,000 miles and it currently has 101,000 miles. We've had no issues with it other than a dead battery because the previous owner bought a cheap Walmart brand battery for it. Uh, so we replaced that and, and no other issues. Love our truck. So let's go ahead and move to the storage, uh, how we use the bed of our truck for storage. When we first hit the road, we had a tri-fold soft tonneau cover on the back, but that was climbed on by a black bear and ripped to shreds. So we, in, we switched to a hard camper shell. What we have is an ARE, and this is an eight foot truck bed, the long bed, and boy, do we use it. So, as you can see, we've got this baby pretty much full. There's just a little bit of room right here for our trash. When uh, we head into town, we take our trash with us to throw it away. And the way we've got everything organized in here is the stuff that we rarely use is all the way in the front, and the items that we need regularly are toward the back. So, we've got 48 gallons of extra water in these jerry cans to refill the fresh tank of our rv and we've got a 16 gallon water jug right here to refill our drinking water so while we're camping we're definitely going to need this water so it's just right here front and center for me to get and also this is our laundry machine <laughs> the wonder wash so it's front and center so that you know jenny's inevitably going to do a load of laundry while we're here camping so i've got that right there tools gas for the generator if we need it and the ladder there to get up onto the roof of the trailer to tilt and lay back down the solar panels we've also got our bicycle stored in here and some totes to hold you know the various things that we need to set up like our x chocks wood for the stabilizers etc our stand-up paddle boards are all the way in the back because unfortunately we rarely use those and as well as some winter clothes and stuff is all the way in the front of the, of the uh, truck bed. But this space is incredibly useful to us. We've talked about, you know, what if we had a fifth wheel? Where would we put all this stuff? And the answer is, I don't know. So it's really good that we have a travel trailer. <laughs> and this long bed is incredibly useful. We're so glad we got the long bed truck instead of a short bed. Moving on to the trailer now, because like I said, there's not a whole lot to say about the truck. It's a 2004 Silverado two wheel drive. Nothing too special, but if you have any questions about it that I didn't mention, because uh, I did kind of gloss over it, just drop them in the comments and we'll try to answer it. But the trailer we have is a Keystone Springdale Summerlin Series 2020 QB, and we bought it new in 2017 for $14,500. The major selling points of this trailer, the reasons we bought it, is first off, it has really big holding tanks for its size of trailer. It's only 24 and a half feet long, but it has a 54 gallon fresh tank, and um, I'm not sure the exact size of the gray and black tanks, but combined, they are 76 gallons. We have a composting toilet inside, which we'll show you in a little bit. So we were able to combine our gray and our black tanks into one huge 76 gallon gray tank. 
Another selling point for us, which you'll see later, was the rear picture window takes up basically the entire rear of the trailer, the rear wall. So when we're sitting at our desk, we just get to look out at the beautiful vistas that we're parked at, and that's incredible for us. And then the last selling point for this trailer is that for its size, it's got pretty decent storage. So let's check out the first one. This is the front storage bay on the door side of the trailer, and it's actually a pass-through storage. So there is another door on the opposite end that opens up, and this storage goes wall to wall, and it's pretty big and tall for this size of trailer. But in this storage area, we keep mostly tools, cleaning supplies, and our laundry basket, which actually has a chute that we can open up on the inside and just drop laundry into. It's kind of nice. But we've sectioned this pass-through storage off into two sides, so there's actually a wall we've built, and I'll show you why. So this is the door to that pass-through storage on the other side of the trailer, and in here is where we've placed all the electrical components for our solar system. So we've got the inverter, converter charger, transfer switch, and our battery bank all stored in here. Now we made a three-part series that talks about how I installed this. It shows it all step by step. So if you're curious about how to install solar onto your RV, go ahead and check that out. But the basics to this system, all the you know basic stats is that we've got a 3000 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter. We've got 400 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is two 200 amp hours batteries wired in parallel for us. And on the roof of the trailer, we've got 480 watts of solar or three 160 watt solar panels. We essentially live off of this solar system. We very rarely have to fire up our generator to charge our batteries back up and we love it. It allows us to go anywhere, camp anywhere. We boondock and dry camp almost exclusively and we have power. And then the final outside storage bay leads to nothing. <laughs> this used to lead to a storage area that was under the dinette. We had a U-dinette that took up the whole rear part of our trailer, but we actually pulled that dinette out and replaced it with a more comfortable and, in our opinion, aesthetically pleasing desk area, which we'll show you that in a little bit. So I mentioned earlier we have a composting toilet and our gray and our black tanks are combined into one big gray tank. And if you're curious about how we did that, we're actually pretty lucky. It's super easy for us because our gray tank dump tube and our black tank dump tube all lead to one exit. So all we had to do was put another knife valve on the end that just screwed on or that screws on in a similar way that the, um, the dump tube does and then just close it open the black valve, open the gray valve, leave this one closed, and then as the gray tank fills up, it just backfills into the black tank. So there we go. It's that easy to combine our tanks. And then another small note is that our trailer has an exterior shower, which we thought we would never use, but we find we use it actually quite a lot. So like say I wanna wash my hair, or we wanna rinse something off, or if Jenny wants to do laundry, we use this exterior shower for that so that then that water doesn't go into our gray tank. And for boondocking and dry camping, saving gray tank storage is a really big deal. Up toward the front of the trailer, there are a couple of things to talk about. First off, this trailer has two 20 pound propane tanks. So, you know, they're the typical size of a propane tank that you get on a gr gas grill. So they're not that big, but for just Jenny and I, two 20 pound tanks last us about three weeks, maybe two weeks if it's really cold and we have to run the furnace a lot. Our trailer does not have an electric jack because, come on people, this is a Summerland, a Springdale, no frills here, right? But all joking aside, we chose to have this manual jack because it kept the price down. Again, we only paid $14,500 for this trailer brand new. And that was one of the main reasons that we were able to full-time RV is because this baby um, just wasn't all that expensive. And we also get a lot of questions about how we secure our trailer, how we go out and travel or exploring, leaving our trailer behind out in the wilderness and we're okay with it. Uh, and one of those things that gives us a little bit of peace of mind is this nice big Blaylock uh, hitch lock. So we know that it's gonna be a little harder for someone if they want to steal our trailer and roll off with it. They gotta get through this beast first. 
When the trailer's stationary and we're camped at a location, we always cover our tires so that they're protected from UV damage. And the leveling system that we use to level our trailer from side to side are called Anderson levelers. They're really nice because they're curved and you just either pull the trailer or in this instance, back the trailer up onto them. And as the wheels go onto them, it increases in thickness. So it raises that side of the trailer that needs to be leveled. They're really nice. And then to keep the trailer, help keep the trailer stable, we have these X chocks that tighten down on both of these tires so that they can't move, you know, as you're moving around in the trailer. So if you've got a trailer or fifth wheel and you're not using these, take a look at it next time you're camping and you'll see as people are moving around, these tires will move a little bit and it adds to instability inside the trailer despite the fact that your stabilizers are down. So we really love these X chocks. And then finally for the outside of the trailer, these are the camping chairs we use. The style is zero gravity. And what that means is that they lean back. Oh yeah, perfect for stargazing at night. So comfortable. You can go show them the inside now. I'm gonna nap. I need your help showing them the inside, Mr. Cameraman. Starting on this side of our RV, which is near the nose of the RV, is our bed. It includes our closets and all the storage space that goes along with it. One thing that we do wish we had a little more of was closet space. Our closets are tiny. I have one and David has one. So what we have done to combat the tiny storage um, space for clothes is that we've added a box like this on either side which holds pants and other warmer clothes and then up top we each we have all sorts of extra storage things up here now our bed does have storage underneath it too let me show you our storage actually only goes halfway back because that back there is part of our pass-through now down here we have mostly stuff for the animals we have all of our pet food we have pet toys, we have our backpacks, extra blankets, cat litter, stuff like that. So almost all of this down here is pet related. And then over there on that side of the bed, we have camera gear. And then right here- at Whoa, the whoa, hey Jenny, wait. What? Did this bed come with those gas springs? Oh, it did not actually. Uh, and that was really annoying because this bed that we got, which also was not original, we got it at overstock.com. Uh, we can put a link in the description for the bed and the gas springs, but the bed was really, really heavy to lift. So David installed these gas springs. They work amazingly. <laughs> so on either side of the bed, we actually can't walk next to it because we've put so many things on either side. Um, storage wise on David's side of the bed is all of our camera gear, including our drone, extra backpacks for camera stuff. All of that is on David's side of the bed. On my side of the bed is the cat box and all of our shoes. We have a small box for those, along with my yoga mat, 
And then at the very base of the bed is our rabbits with all of their care needs and their cage is always left open as long as we're home so that they can hop in and out all they want. One last thing about back here on this side of the RV is that this is where the laundry chute is. It has this nice little handle and it lifts right up into the storage bay and then all our dirty clothes can just boop right down there, right into the laundry basket. Next, I'm gonna show you our bathroom. It is very small, but we like it and it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. First, starting off with the door, we have a towel rack that we have actually screwed in the back of it so that it is kind of permanent in here. We have our composting toilet, and David did a complete install video on this, so if you're interested in the composting toilet, um, all that information is in a video. He'll link that in the description below. Um, like I said, it's a little cramped in here. <laughs> this is about the only spot in the entire bathroom that you can stand in. So if you don't like cramped bathrooms, you know, it kind of sucks, but we don't mind it. We have very little countertop space in here, so we use it for things like my makeup, tissues, extra toilet paper. This is a small cubby down here. We store toilet paper, some band-aids, perfume, other type things. And then this, ugh, this has two shelves, which are actually pretty difficult to get to. We store a lot of our extra shower items and um, other bathroom stuff, I guess, in there. We have also installed these hanging baskets and I ended up using 3M tape, right? 3M tape um, on the backs of command hooks to keep them on the wall because I found that the command hook tape that normally comes with them wasn't enough to hold these. And these actually pull off so that I can take them down for while we're traveling down the road. And then in our shower, it's incredibly tiny. I don't know why there's actually a tub in here because if you wanted to take a bath, there is no way you'd be able to sit in here in order to take a bath. So I don't know why it's a tub, but it is enough that we can turn around. It's a little cramped, but it's nothing too bad. And then in the bathroom, this is another install video that we'll link in the description below. We installed a Max Air fan and took out the tiny little computer fan that normally is in here. David also installed this oxygenic shower head. It gives you more water pressure with, with using less water. Um, we have a couple extra install items that came or that David has done for our shower head, including this shut off valve right here, which makes it so that it doesn't drip. And also so that when you, you know, you're taking your military showers that you don't get blasted with cold water or blasted with hot water. And we'll also link to those videos down in the description below. Moving on to our kitchen area, which isn't saying much because we don't have to move very far because our trailer is very small. <laughs> you will notice that we don't have a slide. We actually did that on purpose. There are three reasons why we didn't get a slide. The first reason is mostly cost. Uh, each slide I think is about $5,000 extra uh, for a trailer. Uh, the second is that slides are actually very heavy. So without a slide, our carrying capacity is greater with our trailer. And then third, what was the third one? And third, it was something that we weren't going to have to worry about maintenance wise, and it's worked out pretty good for us. This doesn't seem like too little space. Now these are the only two upward storage cabinets in the whole RV. So let me show you what I store in here. Uh, we store mostly cups, plates, and bowls in here on this side, extra kitchen towels in the center. And then over here I have my cutting boards and our Cuisinart Griddler. We've talked a little bit about our Cuisinart Griddler before. We use it mostly for breakfast and grilling sandwiches on. And we absolutely love it. It uses electricity, it uses kind of a lot, but with our solar setup, it doesn't really use much for us and we absolutely love it. It's so easy to use and it doesn't take up much space. On our countertop here next to the sink, we have a two and a half gallon drinking water jug that we keep in here at all times. Now, this is the only drinking water we keep in the RV um, and it is only two and a half gallons, but we have, like David showed earlier, a 16 gallon uh, drinking water tank in the bed of the truck along with all of those blue freshwater jugs. Now those freshwater jugs are only for the fresh tank. The 16 gallon thing is for drinking water only. The reason we do that is because we don't actually drink the water that comes out of our fresh tank. And the reason being is because we've been plenty of places where we don't have a water spigot that specifically says it's potable water. And if we want potable water for drinking water, we have to go typically to a glacier water fill if there isn't a potable water spigot nearby. And it can cost a lot of money to fill 
all of our water, including our fresh tank, with that kind of water source. So we, we don't drink the water out of our fresh tank. We only drink it out of these and the 16 gallon tank that we have in the truck. Now this is drinking water for us and the pets. And speaking of the pets, we also have some pet stuff right here. We have the cat harnesses and leashes hanging up here along with keys. And this is a command hook. You'll notice a trend. A lot of our viewers use command hooks everywhere. Um, down here we have Sweetie's leash, an umbrella, and all of Sweetie's um, walking gear right here, along with, you know, the food dish um, and brooms over here as well. Uh, back here we have keys and kind of other junk items. And then coming to our sink, our RV didn't come with a sink cover, so David was actually nice enough to make this for me. And I absolutely love it. It keeps Butters from getting in the sink and licking the dishes, which she's really good at, by the way. <laughs> One thing I really like about our RV is it has this little spice rack. I thought we weren't going to use it and that I was going to hate it when we first bought the RV, but it has been incredibly useful and I actually love it. We also have two nice drawers here where we keep like um, knives and spatulas and stuff. And then this one's kind of a drunk drawer, but it also has my blender and measuring cups along with extra sponges and pens and stuff. <laughs> In this cabinet, we keep all of our silverware, along with cleaning supplies, our heater, our vacuum, extra storage stuff, and I have a, a giant jug in here too. This actually goes pretty far, pretty deep in here, and I really like it for storing things that I don't get to very often. Speaking of the vacuum that I mentioned, this is the vacuum that we have. It's a Dyson V7 Trigger, and we absolutely love it. We've only had it for about a month, and we wanted to get a handheld vacuum that had a beater bar attachment and this one does. We needed it, there goes butters, we needed it for our new rug over by our dinette which I'll show you in a little bit and it also has other attachments and it just works with this little trigger. Very very handy. And also that is butters' favorite hiding spot. Oh man, butters, this is butters' favorite hiding spot. There's a little ledge back here and it actually goes and she can hide down here there's this giant cubby in here and she just lays in there i don't know she's kind of weird she is weird <laughs> our rv came with a regular microwave it is not a convection oven because it came with an oven as well and we may not use our microwave very often we used to use it for storage but we had some things break because they were bouncing around in there so we don't anymore and i have this really nice stove cover we don't have it attached so that we can pull it out of the way and then here I actually put the clean dishes that are drying on top of this so I have these two little drying mats that fit perfectly here. Oh butters popped out. Oh and butters are back. <laughs> Watch out. She's a silly. She is silly and then obviously just your regular oven that comes in an RV. Now right here we have a little charging station. We have um, a couple um, AC plugs and a DC plug so we can have things charging here at any point in time. And then just like in the bathroom, I uh, used command hooks and 3M tape to attach these baskets. And again, these also come off for when we're traveling down the road. Our RV came with this little, what do you call this? That is a radio. Radio, but it's not just. It's a radio. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so our RV came with this little radio station and it's Bluetooth too, so we can play whatever we want over the speakers inside or the speakers outside. We really like it, it's very nice. The problem with it is this, this is normally like a blue lit screen, but David figured out how to unplug it so it doesn't keep us up at night. And then in this cabinet, I have all of my cooking pots. I have our Instant Pot right here, which I can put a link to it in the description below. I absolutely love it. I use it mostly to make shredded chicken and our chili. And then I have all of our pots and pans right here. And then uh, our pots and pan, our pots here and all the pans here. And then extra baking ware here, along with all of our Ziploc bags and other baking items. Oh, and I used yet, a, yet another command strip here to hang oven mitts. Our RV came with an eight cubic foot fridge and freezer. And on our fridge and freezer, we just have some memories and our schedule. And our refrigerator and freezer runs off of 
either propane or electricity, AC electricity. So if we want to, we can run it on solar, just not for very long. And we mostly run it purely on propane. And above our refrigerator, we have our um, solar monitoring system, our battery monitoring system. And um, we have, we can turn our inverter on right here, and then we can see how charged we are, what kind of amps we're drawing or bringing in, all that fun stuff right here above the fridge. Next to the refrigerator here, we have our pantry. It is the only spot for extra food that we have that came with the RV. And both of these sections are really tall, so to make better use of the area, I built small shelves in here for things like um, canned foods and our toasters in there and stuff like that. And I have it pretty packed to the brim. I wish that I had more pantry storage. That would be really nice. But unfortunately, this is all I have to work with. And besides extra food, we also store trash bags and other cooking items in here. And now we're finally to the back of the trailer, which is where Jenny and I spend the vast majority of our time when we're in the trailer. Now back here, there used to be a big U dinette that took up this whole area. The good part about that dinette is that under the seats was extra storage. But the downside is that we work here. You know, we've got our laptops and we work on our laptops for eight to 10 hours a day. And sitting at that dinette was so incredibly uncomfortable. It was giving us back and neck pain. And actually our shoulders and our elbows were starting to hurt as well, just because of the terrible ergonomic position. It was all at crazy angles. So we decided to finally get rid of that dinette and we built this table uh, this is like desk situation and we got these nice comfortable desk chairs uh, so that we had nice comfortable ergonomic seating and literally I'm not even joking within a week our back and neck pain just went away I was getting tension headaches every single day I haven't got one since and another awesome thing about this setup that we've got as opposed to the U dinette is that we have a separate eating and working space. So before when we had the dinette, it was just one big table right here and our laptops and the various electronics that we use when we're working took up that entire table. So when we wanted to sit down and have breakfast or dinner or whatever, we would have to move our laptops somewhere. There was never a good place to put them, move all our electronics off the table so that we had a place for our plates and our cups for eating. But now we've got this table right here that was over there that has this uh, fold up table and this is where we sit to eat. So now we don't have to disrupt our workspace to sit down and have a nice meal facing each other. Now what's really nice about this gate leg table also is that it's got three drawers on this side and three drawers on the other side that we use for storage. And we just put movies, electronics, candle stuff, and uh, flea and tick medicine for the pets in there. And it's really nice because we lost some storage, like I said, when we removed the dinette, but at least we gained some back. And we got this table on Amazon. So if it looks interesting to you, you can check it out yourself. Our furnace is right here and our u dinette used to cover it, but since we removed the dinette, we had to build a box around the furnace so that it was still covered. And we did gain a little bit of storage back that way as well because Jenny sits her crafting supplies on top of it as well as Sweetie's bed and some of the things that we sell on our swag store that we have to keep on hand like stickers, koozies, and photo prints and you can check those out on our website and there's a link to that in the description below. If you're interested in exactly what we did to remove the u dinette we had back here and build this desk and just re-renovate this whole workspace back here, you can go ahead and check out the video for that. We'll have a link to that in the description below. Also, all the random RVing items that we showed in this, so for instance, like the x chalks, our RVing chairs, the uh, cooking things we mentioned, like the Instant Pot, the Cuisinart Griddler, the entire solar system, all that stuff. Our composting toilet, yep, everything. Yeah, there will be links to that in the description below. Those are Amazon affiliate links, so if you go through those links and then purchase something, we do get a small kickback, and that helps support the channel. So thank you for that. That has been our tour of our full rig truck and trailer. So if you've got any questions, anything we may have missed or forgotten to talk about, feel free to leave a comment 
And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's about it. Yep. So that's it for this video. And we'll catch you guys next time. Yep. Bye. Bye.